Good day, my name is Angelo. This is Nation Voice Tower, your most preferred YouTube channel. How have we been? As of we over here, we've been doing perfectly all right. Okay, this update is just like a documentary, but I'm going to be sharing it bit by bit so you'll understand where I'm coming from and where I'm going to. Right now, um, let me not waste much of your time. There are lots of political tricks that are being played by people in government, especially in the federal government that you and I, who are just masses from Nigeria, don't understand, all right? <clears throat> now, let's take it first and foremost. I will be explaining categorically with video evidences how well the Bola Ahmed Tinubu's administration has scammed and deceived Nigerians with just seven months to show for it in administration or in governance, right? It's not just politics, but it's governance. That is why we always hammer on gov. We always hammer on governance, not just politics. Now listen. The Bola Tinubu government has ended up deceiving Nigerians with a wide range and lots of audio contracts, fake bilateral deals with lots of countries, with no plan of these deals being realized or being put into reality. In a short time or any time soon. How? Some of you may be asking how. Now, if you don't know that the Bola Tinubu administration has been scamming Nigerians, then you need to wake up from your slumber. Tell me one particular bilateral deal that has been signed, approved, and implemented by the Bola Ahmed Tinubu's administration with any foreign country. Please tell me one, just one. All right, you're getting where I'm getting to, right? Now, it's almost seven months down the line since Bola Tenobu took over government. There are a few questions in my mind. I will show you the video so you'll understand. Number one, where are the Indian bilateral contracts or agreements that we saw them attending? Where are they now? Where are the Arabian bilateral contracts? Where are they? We are at the German bilateral contract, which Bolatinibu flew out of Nigeria countless times to go and sign, shake hands, and um, show to Nigerians that he's being very proactive. Where are those deals? Where are those bilateral contracts? Have they been realized? If they have been realized, where have they been implemented? Do you know where I'm getting to now? Do you understand where I'm getting to? All right. Now. The Germans, the Arabs, the Indians, and other investors, what have they done in Nigeria since Bola Tinubu took over government? The Bayo Onanugas, the Ajuri Inglaris have been shouting and saying, oh, Bola Tinubu has, has attracted foreign investors and all of that. Where are they? What have they done? Where is it? They should show us. We've just been seeing Dave Umahi, the Minister of Works, going from state to state and, um, you know, trying to bring on and implement routes and all that. Now, let's start from first and foremost. Summits have been held, and these summits are over, all right? We had a summit in New Delhi. He attended with his son, Sheikh Tinubu. We had another summit in Dubai, the United Arab Emirates, where we went with over 1,000 delegates. The summit on climate change. We had a summit in Berlin. He went for all these things. We had another one in Paris. He went and attended all this. Okay, what have we to show for it? Right. In fact, the just concluded summit on climate change in the UAE just finished. We saw hands being shaked or shaken. We've not seen anything to show for it. Why? Right. So, I want to ask, can one justify the huge amount of capital that have been spent on all these jamboree? Can anybody from the Bola Tenubu government justify these huge amounts of money that have been spent over time? Flight, delegates and all that, welfare, and so on and so on, and what have you, right? I would like, most specifically, Bayo Onanuga, number one. He should be the person to answer this question. Ajuri Inglale, yes, the spokesperson of the president, should be the second person to come on board to answer this question before the chief of staff and then um, the president himself. All of them must answer. All right. Now, they should have to reply this. Over 27 states during these seven months have 
neither attracted investors, neither have they attracted foreign exchange. All right. States in Nigeria have attracted little or no funds during this time, this seven month time of Bolatinubu's tenure. How? Why? Those states, not that they have no resources, not that they have no 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 natural resources or they have no platform to attract foreign investors. They do, of course. We have the Mambela Plateau. We have the the the, the uh, lots of mineral resources in the southeast. We have lots in the southwest. We have the implementation of various policies that are even yet to be realized in the southwest, even in the north. In the north, we have the position of various mineral salts or mineral resources and other you know other endowments aside other business ventures that can be undertaken by these states. But over time, in seven months of Bolatinobu's tenure, there has been no realization in capital importation or foreign direct investments, that's FDIs. Now, this video I'm going to show you is a proof, is a proof for us all, both at home and in diaspora, at home and abroad, to know that Bola Ahmed Tenobu and his administration have put the whole Nigeria in a deep well. I'm trying to say that Bola Tenobu and Kashim Shetima and his administration have scammed us all within the last seven months. We don't know how much more scams or fraudulent activities will emanate from this administration in the next few or three years of their tenure. So I have this analyst from the Arise News Studios to explain to us why, why we always see handshakes, to explain to us why we always see hugs, contracts being signed, official handshakes on telly, but we don't see any of these contracts being realized. We don't see any of these bilateral, um, bilateral, you know, um, treaties being realized. We've not seen any of these countries coming to our own, you know, territory to help us realize our own, you know, uh, economic growth. Why? Please stay tuned for this analyst. Now we need to deal with corrupt issues, attitude to work, attitude to everything, to bring in foreign direct investment. You see, when you go outside and you talk to foreign investors, maybe you talk to uh, uh, presidents or whoever, as soon as you leave the room, they will sit down to have their own meeting. That's how investment works. It's like applying for a bank loan. As soon as you walk out of the door, <laughs> the credit committee will sit down to have their own meeting. As a uh, uh, business application, what do you gentlemen think? Uh, what is his balance sheet here? Does he have, how much does he deposit in this bank in the first place? If my deposits in the bank is almost a sub-zero and Bosin is here to ask for a billion dollars, a billionaire, they're going to say, he doesn't even have deposit here to start with very well. What are his business? They're going to start scrutinizing your credit application, loan application, in your absence. So as soon as Mr. President leaves with his entourage, those countries will sit down with their presidents and the private sector to review Nigeria in our absence. So what they think about us, the assessments in our absence is what matters, not what goes on television. So the decision is not made through those handshakes. Decisions are made after those handshakes to say what is the reality what are the realities on ground in nigeria mr president of that country his minister they've spoken we've heard them now what do you decide it's like looking for a wife now you guys had this bachelor's whatever the first thing is that yeah, you come you bring palm wine or whatever don't I don't, I'm, I'm not going there i just uh, okay I'll, I'll, I'll take that back but again the decision is made to either give you the girl or not after the suitor's family had left Hey, what do you think? Uh... Yeah, discussing marriage. Economic <laughs> <laughs> you know issues. You, you know the in-house... Uh, but the budget has to be involved in no, planning marriage as well. Uh, the bachelors in-house. We are I'm talking about, but I'm to trying to link to the it. Population. Yeah, I'm talking about the budgeting process now. Oh, okay. Because they're talking budget, about the foreign direct inflow. Okay. What is the budgeting? What is the revenue of the prospective suitor? What is his balance sheet? You remember that... Uh, Pension fund that said, the father-in-law says, do you have a pension account? Mm -hmm. And the gentleman was looking like, uh, I don't know what it is. They were, when you have a pension account, come back. come back and hear from my daughter. That is how investment works. So we want investment, you have to be suitable as a suitor. So is Nigeria a suitable destination for investment? We have opportunities. Now you find why investors, if you call an MDA, 
a minister or the CEO of a DG and it's not available for a day or for a week, that investor is not going to wait forever. Remember, every dollar that every investor wants to put anywhere in the world has a competition. Mm. So don't take yourselves too seriously. Take what you admit too seriously. We tend to take ourselves too seriously in this country rather than take what we are doing so serious. We believe that we are serious, right? But again, are we doing things seriously? That is where the difference is. So that dollar is waiting. If you take one week out of 53 weeks in 2034, you are left with 52 weeks. That investor is not going to lose one week because that money is not even his own. Maybe it's a pension fund from Chicago, from wherever, and they are waiting for returns on their own investment. So every dollar we are asking for, either from India, from China, from everywhere, is competing with another dollar from another country, from another region I mean, in the world. I mean, listen, I mean, because you said a lot, and the truth is, it now makes sense why photo ops in Saudi deals announced months after. That's, that's a reception. Photo ops with Olaf Schaaf, deals announced. So, I want Nigeria to succeed. What are the things we can do that when these investors will talk about Nigeria at the back of President Tidubu, they will talk about us favorably? Because there was a time <laughs> that they used to talk about us for eight years yes. ago, 2015 here. Yeah. Most of the FDAs into Africa flowed to Nigeria. Yeah. But today... That's our political capital. But, but yeah. today, when people are talk about, talking about investment, in the oil sector, we call ourselves a giant of Africa and oil, but they are investing more in the oil sector in countries like Egypt that we will not tout. Angola. Yeah, and Angola. Senegal, not tout Sierra Leone. Is Senegal, Syria alone? Yes, DR Congo. Than us. I mean, look at even Liberia. Look at Rio. Yes. The mining giant coming. So how would they talk about us and say, okay, mm. this makes sense? Because if you say 200 million population, uh, 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 the first thing is, as we speak today, what's the mm. purchasing power of that 200 million population? Rufa, it's very simple. Tanzania just announced that their total investment deals done in 2024 was 20 billion dollars. Deal now, completed. Yes, in 2024. Not announced. Not announced. Was around, was around 20 billion dollars. President Samuel Suluhu just sacked the entire board of the country's electricity company a few days of Christmas because she said, "I'm tired of these power outages." He sa she sacked the entire board. You can't mess with Madam President in Tanzania. Hold on a second. That's not over yet. If you look at the island of Zanzibar just next door, which was part of it, look at how investment flows is going there. South Africa had one of its worst year in terms of electricity outages in 2023. Mm -hmm. By the end of third quarter, September last year, South Africa has posted hmm, about $22 billion FDI into the country, even though they suffered two major economic downside. First, electricity up to level 8 outages by ESCOM. And second, Transnet, which is the logistics company. The shipyards in South Africa and Durban everywhere was failed. The rail, national rail line was in trouble. Despite that, foreign direct investments flew into South Africa between July and September last year up to the tune of about 20-something billion. Well, now, what does that tell you? That despite the fact that we have the same electricity problem in Nigeria, such investment flows was not coming here. Despite the problem of electricity in South Africa, some of the automakers in the world were still increasing their factory portfolio and production in South Africa. Because South Africa lost its industrial number one position in Africa to Egypt just about a year or two ago. And they are very sore about it. They are very unhappy. They want to get that title back as the industrial hub of the continent. Now, so when something is missing here in which South Africa has a major power outages. I've tried to interview sometimes one of our uh, correspondents in South Africa at my show at 7 p.m. and he says, I don't have electricity. I've had to talk to some investment executive chairman of companies and say, oh, please hold on, I have to put on my generator to do it. In South Africa, yet investors were flowing in because they are doing massively. What did President uh, Ramaphosa say? Look, 
It liberalized the whole thing. If you're doing 100 megawatts and below, it's free entry, free exit. I don't want to sign any paper. I just go bring it on. He brought in a new minister last year of electricity. Now, you have a minister of power. But he brought in another minister that his job is to ensure that there is power 24-7. And give that new minister of electricity a, a one-page, one-line mandate. But it still worked. But hold on a second. He's attracting investment in. Mm. So they are using the opportunity of the problem with ESCOM to bring in new alternative sources of energy. And that's why investors are coming in. Look, ESCOM is that old utility like NEPA. Yeah. But we want to do solar. So you come in, right, right, with your own $2 billion, right? Because you want to provide that. Professor here comes in, doctor comes in here and says, I want to do $2 billion in another form of renewable. But because the environment is opened up, so we need to open up our electricity. Look at the TCN, for example, when we look at the energy. These are TCN, if you need to allow people to come in very quickly. The FDB wanted to help us a few years ago, I think under Buhari's administration. They brought in someone from EFDB to help us head the transmission company of Nigeria. He didn't last. So we need to open up. Why we say you are open for business? And I used this uh, uh, illustration yesterday. An evil man, when he says he's open for business, he's not just opening the doors of the shop. He is there, sitting down there. He is chasing customers. All right, that was that. I hope you now understand the real secret behind all those handshakes, all those hugs, all those signatures that have been signed on paper and on TV without us realizing anything. That's one. And um, this goes further to show you that Bola Ahmed Tinubu and his cohorts have really done nothing. They have done little or nothing to show that they are really serious to bring development and to grow the economy in Nigeria. Finally, on the river state crisis, it has boiled for some time and it has calmed down for some time. Now, a group has given the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, 14 days ultimatum to conduct by elections in 27 state constituencies as a result of the recent defection of members of the River State House of Assembly to the APC in secret support of Nyesom Wiki. It is about to get down. Things are about to get serious. Please watch that video where this group gave INEC a 14 day ultimatum. Stay tuned. The National Democratic Coalition have given the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, a 14 days ultimatum to conduct by elections in order to replace the 27 vacant constituencies in the River State House of Assembly. This followed the defection of 27 lawmakers from the People's Democratic Party, PDP, to the All Progressives Congress, APC. Speaking at a press conference on Tuesday, Daniel Okwa, the group convener, said the recent happenings pertains more multiple level of evil for democracy in the country. Immediate past governor of River State, Mr. Yeson Wike, is at loggerheads with the incumbent governor, His Excellency, Simenelae Fubara. We have no qualms with Wike decamping from the PDP to APC. We have no qualms at all. In fact, he currently holds no elected position. So the vacation of office do not apply to him. But since the River's 27 lawmakers in their recognition of Wiki as their godfather, decide to cross into the APC ahead of him. They are welcome to do so. But that is to the extent they comply with the law by vacating their position. The dangerous drama they are staging by breaching the Constitution is not acceptable. The Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria should not be subjected to the whims and caprices of a godfather who, by the way, is not above the law. So he cannot confer protection he does not have on law-breaking law lawmakers. The NDC further calls on the remaining River State House of Assembly members to approach a court of competent jurisdiction to prohibit the sitting of the parliament, which presently no longer has the requisite quorum until such a time that it can form a quorum on account of new members been elected and sworn in into the vacated seats. The lawmakers must also contact the River State Command of the Nigerian Police Force to arrest any of the former lawmakers caught impersonating in efforts to gain access into the chambers 
of the house as they are no longer eligible to enter the place as lawmakers. We urge members of other state assemblies to learn from the mistake and the failures of River State 27 and not throw away the mandates that the electorate gave them in service of Godfathers God, God that will not be able to save them when the law takes its course. All right, you've um, watched the video there. They have given Ainek the ultimatum. And um, Ainek are supposed to, you know, concur to this, even if the ultimatum was not given. Because by law and by the Electoral Act, if you defect to another party, while you are still a serving member of the House of Assembly, you have automatically forfeited your seat. That is just the way it is. That was why two of those members redefected back to the PDP to ensure the safety of their seats. So I would watch, we will sit, hold our arms, and watch the Independent National Electoral Commission and watch what they have to do. This is 2024. This is a new year. Let us see what they have to do. If they would actually carry out um, what the Electoral Act says or what the Constitution says and apply it by rendering the 27 seats or, or 25 seats, let me say, of those defected House members of, us, um, or members of the House of Assembly, let them, uh, to whether they would, they would render it empty and conduct a by-election. Thank you so much for staying this far. Please like, share our videos. Don't forget to drop a comment for us in the comment section. If you're watching me for the first time, please tap the subscribe button as well as the notification bell so that you get to see me firsthand when I drop a new info. See you next time. From me, bye.